Welcome to Spotlight. I'm Kevin Miller, and today I'll be speaking with Sherry Faust, friends of the St. Clair River. We're going to talk about sturgeon. Today's show is sponsored by Blue Water Area Transit. Well, Sherry, welcome, and we're going to tell a fish story today. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, it's going to be a good one. Yeah, because we're going to talk about a big story about a big fish, and that is the lake sturgeon, our iconic protected wildlife that lives right here in the backyard in Port Huron. Even before we started, I learned a lot from you because you've got, you brought a prop and a second prop yeah. today, and I had no idea that we were tagging fish in the St. Clair River and then uh, Lake Huron. Yeah, sturgeon in their own right are a really cool fish. They take 20 years to mature, to spawn. Um, they only spawn every couple years, and they've lived a millennial, um, outlived the dinosaurs, actually. Their story is about 136 million years old, and we're just doing our part to tell their comeback story in the Great Lakes. So because they take about 20 years to mature, to spawn, their conservation plan must also be that long. And so that's about how long Lake Sturgeon research has been going on. In the St. Clair River, biologists come to Port Huron, um, to study lake sturgeon um, because they've been an unknown species um, for 20 years after they hatch. Where do they go? Where do they live? What are they doing that nobody knows? So they've been microchipped. That's why I brought my little fish. There's a little tiny microchip in my uh, fish here and um, every sturgeon when they're um, caught by biologists, they're tagged. They're measured, they're weighed, and they have a little microchip, just like you would put in your pet. And generally, you said they would put it on the top of the fish. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then, um, and then they also have a, a little external tag on them that lets you know they have that microchip in them. You can wave your device right over it, and you know where they were tagged and when, their age, weight. And it just helps build a database of um, knowledge um, and movements in biology about lake sturgeon. A really important conservation species because they're ambassadors for the water quality work that's been completed in the St. Clair River. We only have about 1% of sturgeon today that used to live in the river. So they've, they've survived um, pollution, industrial abuse, habitat loss, overfishing, poaching, and um, so we build a festival around the big fish, the Surgeon Festival coming up on Saturday, June 1st. And we want people to have pride in this iconic wildlife species that we have here and, and, and celebrate that. We all live in the area, of course, and we've lived here, you and I, all of our lives. Uh, and yet we don't really realize what goes on in the waterways mm -hmm. uh, right off our shorelines. Mm -hmm. and so I, I think it's fantastic that we're learning from the fish. Mm -hmm. What have we gathered from the sturgeon that's led to uh, today? Well, we've been able to complete about $20 million worth of fish and wildlife habitat restoration work in the St. Clair River. Some of that has included shoreline improvements to create nice spawning habitat for fish. We've built spawning beds in the middle channel of the St. Clair River where their habitat traditionally was and that was gone. And um, when biologists and researchers come to Port Huron every year around the beginning of June to study the lake sturgeon, uh, their eggs are collected, raised in a hatchery, and then those baby sturgeon are now placed around the Great Lakes and even into Ohio and into Flint, where lake sturgeon traditionally lived. They've long been gone, and we're trying to reintroduce lake sturgeon back into their historical grounds. And Port Huron and the St. Clair River is ground zero for all of that work, which is pretty significant. And I understand you're getting kids involved in the process as well. Yeah, there's really a youth empowerment piece of that. So there are about a dozen baby sturgeon being raised by kids in classrooms right now. So they've been raising the sturgeon all year long. It gives the sturgeon a little competitive edge, their first year of life, being raised in a in a classroom and an aquarium, and then those kids are going to bring their sturgeon to Sturgeon Festival, and they get to hand release them back into the wild and be and kind of close that conservation cycle, and that's what Sturgeon Festival is all about. Yeah, a great participation by young people, educating them, and then they become adults, they completely know what we're doing. Yeah, it's pretty uncommon to see a sturgeon in the wild or even in person, and we're connecting people with that experience at Sturgeon Festival. So everything about Sturgeon Festival, from our stage entertainment, our vendors, food, the whole entire festival experience. It's all about connecting people to the Great Lakes and nature. They're bottom feeders. They're a giant fish. 
Um, you might see a fish at Sturgeon Festival that was born when President Eisenhower was in office. That's how long lived they are. That's pretty significant. And they're in a big tank for you to come see and touch. So that's pretty rare, but we're connecting people to that experience. So they do have pride in the area. Um, and this is one reason why you can have so that. So give us the where, the when, and, and uh, when we can see the Sturgeon Festival. Sturgeon Festival is Saturday, June 1st. It's at Lighthouse Park in Port Huron. The hours are 10 to 3. There's food trucks. There's fun activities. There's fish, big fish. It's free admission. There is a um, water portion of Sturgeon Festival. So we celebrate Sturgeon Festival on, on a ship and also on shore. And you can purchase tickets for a Huron Lady Sturgeon Cruise also on Saturday, June 1st. So everything happens on Saturday, June 1st in Port Huron with Sturgeon Festival. Sherry, thank you so much for the education about a beautiful oh, yeah. fish. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today on Spotlight.